Also, I'm not used to it being so warm. Look what happened to my bar. Do not keep chocolate in your pocket in 90 degree weather. Hajime! I feel like I just did this yesterday. Because I did. Here we are. Round two. Mount Sack. Old news now. Drake relays. New news. One thing I forgot to add in the Mount Sack vlog was right when I got done doing my workout, a guy in a van says, Hey, come over here. And me just feeling kind of down and out of it, I... Ran up to the van, I was like, Hey, what's up, I'm Sean. <laughs> now, thinking about it, I was like, I probably shouldn't have stuck my hand in this weird van's window. I would have grabbed me and pulled me in, and like, dextered me, like, <sighs> And then I wake up surrounded in sand wrap, and then he just goes, and then, and I die. I don't know if you guys watch Dexter, but that's what happens in that show. And then he just goes, and It was one of those moments where I don't know if anyone's ever experienced it, but the guy, in a nutshell, he's like, Hey, were you the guy running up that hill? Yeah, uh, just got done with the meet, getting an extra workout in. He just looks at me and goes, Hey, you are going to continue to break records, and you are going to continue to inspire people, and you are going to continue to do great things because you're going against the grain. And I sat there kind of like, how does he know? I just told him I was running up a hill. And then I talked to the guy for like 30 minutes just leaning in his window like... You just messed with my brain, dude. Like, I, I don't know. It was a weird experience. And the guy just goes... You're gonna be fine. And I never even told him I was upset or anything was wrong or anything. And it was weird. And it's one of those moments I'll never forget. Some random stranger pulls up in a van, told me exactly what I needed to hear at that moment. It made me look at the big picture, it made me look at the whole picture and said, hey, everything is going to be okay. You need to just keep doing what you're doing. There's going to be ups and downs. Your overall success is going up. So, sweet. Just thought I'd share that. And keep focusing on so much on what's going on right now. I got mail! Yay! I got mail! Yay! That's my ringtone. I just got mail. <laughs> Another weird thing, Carrie um, is taking a ceramics class for college and she made me this. It's really heavy. It's made out of the clay. Here's the best part. <laughs> if you blow in it really hard, he gets really mad and he squeaks. <laughs> Really, the air comes out of his butt, see? <laughs> I thought that was funny. Also, my mom breeds dogs, and there was an accidental breeding. We got this little dog, Squishy. We become quite fond of him. He follows me everywhere. This is Squishy. He's been keeping me company while I'm making these vlogs. Uh, so the week before Drake was my off week. Thank goodness. I did six weeks straight, which I didn't know if I could handle it, and I don't know if I can. <laughs> it was a lot. But uh, I got one vault day in. I don't have any video again, because my dad is coaching right now, and he can't go in with me. I worked with Steve White. It was a really good day. Steve taught me how to pike. I made big bars on little poles because I was cleaning up my top end, which is not very pretty. I had a freaking awesome day of practice. Jumped from four lefts. 15, 175 UCS and 15, 180 carbon. And I jumped like 15, seven from four lefts, like had to be 25 times or so, maybe 20 to 25 times. And all we were working on was staying tight to the pole and throwing that pike a little sooner. And Steve White is the master of the top end of the vault. 
I haven't I had such an ugly plant towards the end because I was tired, but I was able to save some jumps. And I am so pumped to jump at Drake with some of these freaks. I'm more excited just to be that close and get to watch them jump. The fact I get to jump with them, awesome. Also, when I was in um, Mount Sac and we were getting ready to head over to watch Riley throw jab, I ran into Steve Chapel, owner of UCS poles and UCS equipment. They make gymnastic stuff and obviously spirit poles. And I could see him eyeballing my car and I had this bag on it. Just jokingly I said, I know it's a pacer bag, but I promise you it's full of spirit poles. <laughs> and I just said it as a joke. And he's like, you need a bag? And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna order one pretty soon when I just get a couple extra bucks. And he's like, I got one in my car. Here you go. So Steve Chapel, if you watch this, I did not try and weasel a pole bag out of you. I thought about it later and it probably seemed like that, but really I was gonna buy a pole bag because I needed one. And you gave me a free one. I'm putting it on my tubes right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because this gill bag, pacer bag is great but it's not mine, it's Steve White's. I guess next on my list of things to purchase is a line of my own poles, cause these ones, they're not mine either. Thanks again, Mr. Chapel. That was very, very, very generous of you and I really appreciate it. Right before I left for the Drake Relays, my brother played with another bomb and instead of blowing up a doghouse, he had this big wooden spool and we blew that up with a bomb too. <laughs> what are you doing now? Nothing. More fun with guns. Hey, that's my bowling ball. Oh, that's my bowling ball. Did you use that, right? You what for that bowling ball? You did not steal it from the bowling alley? I acquired it. <laughs> <laughs> Close, you just you split the wood. It, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That was sweet. I don't know. We're a weird family, and that's what we do. So, fantastic. Found it. Show the direction it went through. Where'd you find it? I didn't. <laughs> There's gonna be an internet star down soon. Driving to Des Moines, Iowa for the Drake Relays was about a four hour drive. On my way to the prestigious Drake Relays, jumped there twice, three times if you count outdoor championships in 2010. And I am pretty pumped. So my poles are packed. With my sexy new UCS bag. First bag I've ever owned myself. And it's the nicest day in Minnesota we've had since November. And I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. We can dance if we want to. We can leave your friends behind. Cause your friends don't dance and if they don't dance with no friends of mine. bad because I drank all of this. I made it to the meet 
Um, I picked up my Got credentials. I don't know what all that means. I got some room with Jeff Cooper. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I'm sure I'll get some good stories for you guys. So, if he's willing to tell them. The hotel was way nicer than I thought it would be. It's too fancy for me. I don't even know where to go. It's weird when I do that and other people are in here. Nice rooms in here. Let's check out the view. Ooh, rough. Let's check out the bathroom. Ah! Ah! I shared a room with Jeff Coover. Hello, elite pole vaulter, and also an overall good guy. <laughs> I didn't know when the women's elite pole vault was, and so he got back to the hotel like eight or nine. And he's like, yeah, I was watching the Elite with uh, Steve Lewis and Brad Walker and uh, Bjorn Otto. It's like, that is awesome. He told me the story of Jen Schur, and I'm not going to be able to tell it the way it happened. So I'll let Jeff Coover tell you the story. All right. Okay, well, first of all, we're talking with Jacob. And, um, okay, so here's what happened. So, 463, first attempt, she runs down and she puts her foot right on the metal part of one of those boxes in the middle of the runway, and it slips out, and Hart me and Hartwig are sitting next to each other, and we're like, what the hell? Like, halfway through the runway, through the run. And then she was like, I stepped on, and Rick loses his mind. He said that there was um, supposed to be duct tape down, and there wasn't, and so they're like, get the duct tape down, get the duct tape down. On her second attempt, they're like, we're about to start the opening ceremony. They have fireworks set up in a circle around the infield in the shape of a track. Starts running, they start firing off at the start line of the 100 meters. She's running down the runway and they catch up with her and they're like <laughs> right next to her like cannons and smoke and the whole deal. Rick Sir is already like what the hell is <laughs> And so she misses and he's just like Jen there's nothing you can do there's shooting stuff that you do in the middle of the runway. And so then she misses again on her third, but they give her a fourth and she like sneaks over it and then at 73 she's just like, she just was out of it. <laughs> yeah, for real. So the meet started in a headwind. My, my heart just kind of sank for a minute and then I just sat there and thought, I have the opportunity to jump with the best vaulters in the entire world. This is the craziest lineup I have ever seen and I get to just be a part of it. I'm just jacked. I was like, either way, I made a bar in headwind in Mount Zach. I can do this again. So we warmed up. It was kind of tail, cross, tail, cross. And then as soon as they read our, our names for the lineup, the meet was just headwind most of the time. So the first run I had, I ran through. I'd never run through, but I can't take off at 16 feet. That's just a little too far for me. Maybe 14. I've done that a few times. So I moved up a foot, and I just hammered on the gas. My second one, I kind of swung it up. Halfway and fell into the pit. And the third one I was just like, ah, I'm going for broke. I'm gonna break this pole. Same thing. I was running on this that just a little 16-0, holding pretty low on it. Hit it, and then I just was like, screw it, and flew over the bar. And I was, I made a bar, made 535. And the whole field was struggling with the winds. They were all over the place. After the meet, just kind of thinking about everything that happened, I was like, I can't jump with these guys. You know, it, it was tough conditions and I made it work. Somehow. It wasn't the craziest wind ever, but for me, it was uh, my headwind PR. I jumped 17, six in a headwind. Week following, I jumped 17 feet in a headwind. That's progress, that's a lot of progress. I've never made a bar in headwind. In two meets in a row, I made two bars and a headwind. 540 is my outdoor PR, so I was only five centimeters away from that. It was the best field I have ever jumped with in my entire life. It had Bjorn Otto, the six meter jumper, silver medal at the Olympics, Brad Walker, the American record holder, another six meter guy, Steve Lewis, a 19 foot guy. Renaud Lavalin. I can't say it's a Renaud, the Olympic gold medalist, world champion, another 6 meter guy, Sam Kendricks, 19 foot college sophomore, I was just pumped to finally meet him, super nice dude, Jordan Scott, always fun to jump with, NCAA champion, just a freak athlete, Jake Winder, another uh, Midwest guy, second at uh, USATF champs this year, nice guy, uh, Jeff Coover, 
my roommate. <laughs> I'm not gonna rattle off your stance. Just say that you're my roommate. No, Coover's all American, 555. Just awesome dude, good jumper. And then Mark Hollis, USA team member, Olympic trials quali qualifier, uh, US indoor and outdoor champion. Mark's one of those guys that early on when I decided to make the switch to keep pole vaulting, he was one of the guys who was like, yeah, you can do it. Call me anytime. And ever since then, it's always been fun running into him at meets. Let me tell you a little something about elite pole vaulters. Everybody knows the sacrifice everyone's having to continue to pole vault, and everyone kind of has this unwritten feel that we're doing this, and it's not easy. There's like a sense of respect out of everybody. We're all kind of like living in poverty training because this is what we love to do. Not, they're definitely not doing it for the money because there's not a ton of money in it. Unless you're a gold medalist. <laughs> but I've never met like an elite guy who hasn't been nice. Here's the best example I have. They're one of like the lowest of the field of these freak athletes. And Bjorn Otto comes up to me, and he goes, <laughs> like this. And I looked at him like, I don't, is that like a German way to high five? So I tried to like reach around and high five him, and he goes, no, glue. <laughs> Started laughing, I was like, oh, sorry dude, glue high five, boom. <laughs> he had glue all over his hand. No, glue. You know, everybody's just, you guys, got, we're rooting each other on. Even though we're competing, or one of the few sports out there where you root for your competitors because when they jump high, it seems like everyone else jumps high too. It was crazy. You know, Olympic silver medalist, six meter guy from Germany, was high five and just a little 18 footer. That was one of those stories that's going to stick with me forever. So the meet was over, we went and got something to eat, strapped the poles back on top of my dad's car because they fit better on the truck. Look at these poles. <laughs> My dad's embarrassed. He hates being on the vlog. <laughs> My mom likes being on the vlog. <laughs> the hard part. Again, if you haven't heard, I got a smartphone. My Twitter is Sean Danger Hoot. Because Danger is my middle name. I'm gonna say that every time. Subscribe, share, uh, like, tweet, and retweet. I'm still trying to figure out Twitter. I don't even know if I said that right. Last but not least, I have been having a lot of fun with Twitter, but I never know what to always take pictures of. So leave in the comments below. It's up to you guys. You tell me what to post. Give me some crazy ideas. Here's a little hint. I have a green man suit. I also have a horse mask. Leave comments below, and I will do that. I got some good news. My next meet is in Puerto Rico. And then a week later, I go to Taiwan. That'll make some good vlog footage. See you then.